AWS Redshift Spectrum extends the analytic capabilities of Redshift to data stored in AWS S3. It allows to query data in S3 without having to load it into Redshift. This feature provides multiple benefits. It enables you to query data across your Redshift and S3 using the same SQL syntax, providing seamless integration. It scales out to query large datasets in S3, leveraging infrastructure independent of your Redshift cluster. With this, you pay only for the amount of data scanned by Spectrum, making it a cost-effective solution for querying large datasets without the need for extensive ETL processes. Optimized for performance, a Redshift Spectrum can query data in a variety of formats, including CSV, Parquet, Sequence, etc. Redshift Spectrum resides on dedicated servers that are independent of your Redshift cluster. Based on the query demand, it can scale automatically to enable massive parallel processing. To use Redshift Spectrum, you need to map your S3 datasets as tables in an external data catalog. This can be built either with the help of AWS Clue, Amazon Athena, or Apache Hive Metastore. After your Redshift Spectrum tables have been defined, you can query and join the tables just as you do with any other Redshift table. When you update S3 data files, the data is immediately available for query from any of your Amazon Redshift clusters. Optionally, you can define partitions for the external tables to improve performance. In the sample scenario, there is a user who is already using Amazon Redshift and it's also interested in querying the data which is available on Amazon S3. And the user wants to query the data with the help of a Redshift Spectrum. To enable Redshift Spectrum, we need to build some components both internally as well as externally to Amazon Redshift. The very first component we need is the IAM role, which is going to be associated to a Redshift. The Redshift is going to assume this role while carrying out the Redshift Spectrum queries. It should have access to Amazon S3 as well as AWS Clue. AWS Clue is a data integration service which you can use to discover, prepare, move, and integrate data across multiple sources. Typically, it's used to develop your ETL processes on AWS. To refer the external data source and the data sets, it uses a concept called data catalog. The data catalog contains the table definitions which carry the metadata information about the data sets sitting externally which could be AWS S3, RDS, Hive Metastore, etc. For our demonstration to work, we need a data catalog, which will be referring to the data set, which is sitting on AWS S3. And this data catalog will be defined with the help of external schema, as well as external table, which we are going to define inside Redshift. This is the reason the IAM role needs access to AWS Glue as well. Now that we understand all the components which we need to enable Redshift Spectrum, let's go and build them one by one. We are at the IAM console. I'm going to click on roles and then create role. The trusted entity type configuration is going to be AWS service itself. We'll be choosing Redshift for it. We'll stick with customizable option. Click on next. We need to provide two sets of permission. One is the S3. I'm going to select Amazon S3 read only access policy, which has the get list and describe access permissions already defined. Another set of permissions we need is regarding the AWS clue. So I'm going to filter it and we are going to choose the AWS clue console full access. If you look inside this, it has permission of all the Glue APIs and the other dependent permissions. I'm going to give a role name. I'll call it Redshift Spectrum Role. Let's quickly check the permissions again. We have the Amazon S3 read-only access and AWS Glue console full access policies. Let's click on Create Role. And the Redshift Spectrum Role is already created. Here is the newly created role. I'm just going to copy the ARN for it, which we will need later in this lecture. Now that we have created the IAM role, we need to associate with our existing Redshift cluster. 
we are at our Redshift cluster. I'm going to click on Actions and Manage IM Roles. We already have the Redshift Spectrum role available, which we just created. I'm going to select this and click on Associate IM Role. And you can see it's been added to this list here. I'm going to click on Save Changes. And this is going to update the Redshift cluster by associating a new role with it. Now that we created the required IAM role, we need to create the external schema and external table. For it, I am going to click on query data so that we have the query editor v2 opened with us. The first query is responsible to create the external schema. I'm calling this schema as demo spectrum schema. And we are creating this schema with the help of data catalog, which represents the AWS Clue data catalog. You can define the external schema based on other sources as well. For instance, Hive, Metastore, Postgres, MySQL, Kinesis, etc. I'm specifying the database value as demo spectrum DB. With this name, the database will be created inside AWS Glue. I'm also associating an IAM role, which has the required permissions with AWS Glue and S3. This is the ARN for the newly created role. And at the last, I'm just saying that create the external database if it does not exist on AWS Glue. Let's connect to the dev database with AWS user. These are the current set of schemas which are available at the moment. Let's click this query to create the new external schema inside dev database. And the query has successfully executed. If we refresh this, you look inside the dev database. We have the new schema created with the name demo spectrum schema with no tables at the moment. Now that the schema is created, I'm going to create the sample table inside the schema. For this, I've already copied a sample sales data at this location. If we go to this location, I have the sales underscore tab dot txt, which is part of our sample ticket database. I just uploaded it to a separate bucket for the demonstration so that we can refer it separately. Here is the complete command. We are saying create external table. We are giving the name here. Demo spectrum schema is the schema name. And then we are calling the table as sales. We are defining all the columns and the column types as we did earlier. As the sales data is delimited by tab, so this is what we are specifying. Here is the location we are specifying. So this should be either the folder location or if this is the file, then it should be a manifest file, which should contain the references of the actual data files. In our case, it's going to be the folder name, which is demo redshift spectrum slash sales inside QTB redshift data bucket. We are also specifying the table properties here. We are specifying the property number of rows as 172,000. This is just to indicate that these are the rough number of records which are available at this location. And this statistics can be used by the query plan inside Redshift to plan the query execution. Let's run this query to create the external table. And the query is successfully executed. Let's refresh it. And we can see within the schema, demo spectrum schema, we have the sales table created for us. If we go inside AWS Glue data catalog, You'll see our demo spectrum DB is already created as the database here. And within this database, there is a sales table created, which is referring to the S3 location where the data is sitting for the sales table. Now that the external schema and table are in place, let's go and do a sample query on the external data on AWS S3. I'm going to run this query, which is getting the count of records from the sales table inside the demo spectrum schema. Let's run this. And we got the result. We have 172,462 records, 
which are sitting on AWS S3. Here is the relatively complex scenario where we are using the sales table within the external schema along with the users table which is sitting on the public schema. In this query, we are getting the top 10 buyers by quantity. First, we are querying the sales table. First, we are querying the external sales table, and then we are joining it with the users. Let's see if we are able to run this query. And this has successfully returned the results with the first name, last name, and the total quantity sold for the top 10 buyers. And this demonstrates that we can use the external tables in the very similar manner as we would be using any tables within the Redshift. With this, we have successfully demonstrated AWS Redshift Spectrum.